welcome into another edition of Saints Live from the Stevenson Dining Hall on the campus of Limestone College. It's a basketball only show as we'll be talking with the head coach of the Limestone Men's Basketball Program, Brandon Scott, a little later. Yes, basketball is indeed in the air. A lot of fall sports still competing, closing in on conference uh, tournament time. And as we do each and every week in our opening segment of Saints Live, we'd like to bring you up to date with what is going on on the sports scene. Women's field hockey recently capturing the ECAC regular season championship. Coach Lindsey Jackson and company, number six in the latest NCAA Division II field hockey rankings. And uh, men's soccer won the Conference Carolina's regular season championship. Coach Eric Alsop and company rising to number 10 in the latest NCAA Division II national ratings. Women's basketball, preseason expectations are high. Coach Corey Fox and company ranked number 11 in the USA Today preseason Division II basketball poll. So Coach Fox and company about to get their season underway. And men's basketball, I mentioned it earlier, a little later we're going to talk with Brandon Scott, the head coach of the Saints. And for the first time in history, the men's basketball program here at Limestone in the national rankings. That as far as the NCAA era is concerned, the Saints jumping in at number 21 in the men's preseason Division II national rankings. So a lot is going on here at the Rock. The fall sports season is winding down. We're closing in on the Thanksgiving holiday and that means the basketball season is about to get underway. We invite you to stay tuned. There's still plenty more to come when Saints Live continues from the Stevenson Dining Hall on the Limestone campus and here on Gaffney's Hot FM. Welcome back everyone to Saints Live and inside look at Limestone College Athletics continues from the Stevenson Dining Hall on the campus of Limestone College with a gentleman sitting next to me right now, uh, certainly very familiar to folks that are in our audience today and a voice that will sound familiar to those that are listening uh, to this afternoon's uh, broadcast, Brandon Scott, the head coach of the Limestone Men's Basketball Program. He's got his fan club here today, but uh, Coach, good to see you. Great seeing you, Fabian. It's been a while, so I'm glad to be with you. Well, you, you, you still look good as always, going through preseason practice. I know times are hectic as you're trying to get a lot of work in in a short period of time. And congratulations on the preseason ranking at uh, number 21. Yeah, well, we thank you very much. Uh, when we took over the program uh, back in 07, 08, uh, we wrote down about seven goals that uh, really hadn't been accomplished in, in, in the NCAA area, definitely, and, and sometimes in the whole program history, and uh, that's the last one. Uh, we, we had never been ranked in the top 25, and last year's team did a great job. Um, a lot of it probably but was we were returning Shaq Dance and Asad Woods and, and Josh Odom. With, with Josh not being back now with the injury, um, you know, that definitely affects expectations, but it was an awesome thing, and we were really excited about it. Not only back-to-back -back trips to the NCAA Division II National Field, but now three times in the last four seasons, your basketball program has gotten to the NCAAs. Just a fantastic stretch over that four-year period of time. Each and every year, um, you know, we, we want so badly. We want to use November, December, January, February. We want to compete for the conference tournament championship and get to the NCAA tournament. And we've been really fortunate. Uh, we've had great players. Uh, my assistant coaches, Coach Jones and Coach Davis, are fantastic. And we've had great senior leadership. And, and so hopefully if we can get that again, um, we'll have a chance to, to make it four out of five. Well, I, I mentioned earlier preseason practice is well underway. How have things gone so far as you get set for the 14-15 campaign? Well, I, I, the expectation level, um, you know, we felt like bringing those starters back that we had last year. Um, we had certain expectations, and losing Josh Odom was such a huge thing. So, you know, we're, we're so brand new again. And aside, like I just told you off air, you know, he's been out of practice for a week and a half. We don't know when he's going to be back. So we love our guys. We love our returners. We love our um, new guys. But, you know, we're all brand new again. So it just takes so much time 
to get on the same page defensively and offensively, but we got a great group of guys and it's been a lot of fun so far. Now, I think you touched on it, some of the young men as far as some of the returning players are concerned and unfortunately some of the injuries which are a part of the a game and it's a matter with just how you deal with them, but uh, how about some of the other returnees this year? Uh, this is going to be a long segment part. Um, we got so many. We, we've got five brand new guys. Uh, Samuel Gukway from Liberty. Uh, he, he has one year left. We're really excited about him. Brolin Floyd and, and Justin Holloman are transfers coming in from Queens and, and Liberty as well. Um, they got two years left. They're doing. We're, we're going to rely heavily on them. And we got two freshmen. We're really excited about Walter. Uh, Cole and Evans Moreau. Uh, Evans is from Florida and, and Walt, Walter's from the Atlanta area. <coughs> so we're excited about all them. But then we got Teron Wallace, who he was only with us a couple months last year, so he's brand new. You know, AJ Evans has been with us forever, but we're going to depend on minutes from him. Um, so uh, we, we've got a bunch of new guys trying to put this thing all together. Coach Scott, 21 wins each of the last two seasons. We mentioned earlier three NCAA Division II national tournament appearances within the last four years. You may have touched on this earlier, but what's been the key to your success? Because obviously you're now an established program. You don't have the success, and you're able to answer the call, it seems like, every season. Continuity on the coaching staff has been enormous. You know, uh, Coach Jones and Coach Davis, again, are just unbelievable. We couldn't do anything without them. We've had talent. Talent has helped a ton. Uh, but the thing that has set us apart, in my opinion, um, our senior leadership has been phenomenal. Um, we tell them each year uh, that they, the seniors must care as much as the coaching staff about winning and sacrificing. And, and for the most part, we have done that. And, and this year will be no different. If Even with the Josh um, injury, if we can all stay healthy and the seniors and older veteran guys can do a great job of leading and, and, and modeling the behavior that we want, um, we'll have a chance. So I, I just think continuity in our coaching staff, talent, and then seniors making winning important. Now Coach Scott was talking about some of the, the injuries and newcomers so far early in the preseason. I, I dare ask, we hear it from the highest levels of college basketball, even down in, into the middle school ranks. Rotation, rotation, rotation. So I'm sure it's going to be a little while before you get your rotations down a bit. And we, and we feel pretty good about um, you know who, who the guys are going to be. Um, definitely Shaq from last year, Asad Woods, Avery Bomar. This will be his third year with us. Uh, Santo Aguque, Roland Floyd is going to be right there. Justin Holloman, uh, the two freshmen, Walter and Evans, are going to be in there. Uh, Teron Wallace is going to be in there, and then A.J. Evans. So I, I think right now we got 10 or 11 guys really fighting for rotation. Um, again, the key will just be learning how to compete defensively together, uh, even when I'm tired, when I'm frustrated, when I'm not getting my way, and then offensively really understanding our role because, you know, every basketball team – must value the ball, um, so you got to you got to really fight for the ball and value it. So you're getting great shots up there, and, and then getting balanced, so you're not turning the ball over. So um, those are our rotation guys, and, and now every day it's just about trying to ingrain how to win. And one of the reasons that Limestone has had the success that it has had over the last several years in Conference Carolina's play, and we'll touch on this in our next segment when we continue with the coach, but the Saints always play a robust non-league schedule. And in fact, the Saints are going to head down to the state of Florida, play so many games in such a short period of time, the managerial staff may not have enough time to clean the uniforms for all those games the Saints are going to play down there. But we're going to talk about the 14-15 schedule Limestone men's basketball. We continue with the head coach of the Saints, Brandon Scott. We'll be back at the, Tim at the Stevenson Dining Center on the campus of Limestone College with more Saints Live after these messages on Gaffney's Hot FM. Everyone of Saints Live continues from the Stevenson Dining Hall on the campus of Limestone College and on Gaffney's Hot FM, WZZQ. 104.3 FM. I'm Fabian Fuentes alongside the head coach of the Limestone Men's Basketball Program, Brandon Scott. And you, you just dropped a bomb on me. 
as we were coming back out of this break. A segue earlier, I had talked about one of the keys to our success in Conference Carolina's action over the last several years has been the robust non-conference schedule that you've played. And now, tell me what you just said this year's schedule has. That is the hardest non-conference schedule that we've ever had. Oh my, that, that's hard to believe when you take a look at some of the opponents that the Saints have played in the past. So before we talk about some of those league matchups this year, I'll let you go ahead and talk about some of the, uh, the marquee matchups on that uh, non-league slate. We, we open up with uh, Wingate and Mars Hill. Wingate's been a perennial power the last five years, maybe more. Um, so they'll be tremendous. We play them at their place on a week from Friday. And then we play Mars Hill. And they were a little down last year, but they return everybody and have Rick Scruggs at their coach, who's an excellent basketball coach. Then we play Anderson. And Anderson's lived in the NCAA tournament the past couple of years. We play Anderson at Anderson. And then we go, uh, North Georgia comes here out of the Peach Belt, and they have four to five Division One transfers every year. And then that Florida trip, Fabian, uh, Florida Southern won 25 games last year. St. Louis, St. Leo won 26 games. And Tampa and Eckerd are big time powerhouses down there. So, you know, what we wanted to do last year, we had such a new team, we didn't know what to expect. You want to give your, a good team an opportunity to get an at-large bid, and, and you've got to really have a great strength of schedule. And so we did it for that reason. And then the other reason is, um, you know, prepare us for our, our conference season. Um, but yeah, this is a really tough schedule. Now, you mentioned the opponents that you're going to play in Florida, and I talked about the fact that the uh, team managerial staff will have their hands full keeping the uniforms clean, because you're not only playing, what, four games down there, but you're playing those in as many days. Yeah, we, uh, it, it's at the end of Christmas, right before we leave for Christmas, we've got a bunch of Florida guys, and it, it, it started out as only going to be in two games, and then Tampa made an offer we couldn't refuse, so we just decided to be down there a couple more days, and so I think it'll be great for our team, you know, camaraderie-wise, and it, it'll be a great opportunity for us to grow together, but it will be an incredible challenge down there. I told Sami, who comes from Liberty, uh, last year, I was like, you're going to think we're still in the Big South um, because those teams are ridiculously good. Now, let's talk about some of the uh, the upper echelon Conference Carolinas teams that you're going to get the face. You did mention Wingate earlier on a non-conference basis. Two years ago, Wingate and Limestone matched up in the uh, NCAA Division II uh, Regionals. But uh, talk about some of those teams when it comes to uh, Conference Carolinas action. Okay, uh, the league is going to be as... Uh, talented as ever. Um, it's going to be really competitive. This year, the clear favorite, and I told this to Trey last year, uh, was King. And we beat King in the championship game last year, and they return everybody. Um, so they are the clear front runners. And then you got Mount Olive, who we beat in the semifinals. They only lost one player. You know, Coach Livingston is going to have Barton really good. North Greenville is really good. Pfeiffer will be really, really good. And then, you know, Belmont Abbey, Erskine, Lees McRae, um, all these teams. It's just such a competitive league. Uh, but I definitely think uh, King is at the top and Mount Olive and, and the normal suspects. But it, it will be a really, really, really difficult competitive league for everybody. And we also have a, uh, a newcomer uh, this year. Of course, we played Southern Wesleyan in the past. Uh, but we also have another newcomer in Emmanuel. Now, I remember going to Emmanuel in the old, old days back when they had their old facilities, but uh, now they've got some nice state-of-the-art facilities, so, you know, there's some fresh blood in the conference now. And Southern Wesley, and I'm glad you brought them up because we, we played them last year twice, and we, we beat them maybe by three. Um, at their place, and they return everybody and signed another Division One transfer, so they'll be good. Emmanuel was in the national championship game this past year in NAI Division One, and they didn't lose much at all. Um, so it, they will be phenomenal. So it, it will it will be very very competitive. Coach Scott, let me ask you. This may be an unfair question, but from a recruiting standpoint, uh, when you talk about where you've gotten some of your players now from the uh, higher levels, and I guess when you win, uh, go to the NC three times in the last four years, this kind of becomes a very favorable destination for folks that want to play college basketball. Well, we hope so. Um, you know, going to school at Limestone like I did, you know, I think Limestone is a great place uh, because people care so much about you. Uh, but on the basketball side, 
you know, we, we like to think that. We like to think that if guys will come here, then they're going to have an excellent chance to be productive on the floor and also win, which are the two ingredients that really make for a successful basketball career. Um, so I think at Limestone is an excellent place to be, and, and we hope recruits do too. Coach, let's talk about the uh, Timken Center in the facility that you've got to uh, play in. Uh, well, we love it. Um, it it's, it's, I think it was more um, uh, constructed in the 70s, but we, we love the feel. Coach Serino and the administration have done an excellent job um, kind of uh, throwing paint on the walls. I mean, just uh, signs and um, the floor. There's just been so many improvements. Um, and then, you know, football has helped so much because you automatically add 100 fans because most football players love, love basketball and the band. Last year, um, it was so much fun um, as far as the home court environment with the band and the crowd. So I'm, I'm expecting more of the same this year. And when football came about, there may have been some folks that, you know, were kind of scratching their head and, and did not realize the impact that football has beyond the program itself. And I think you just touched on those increased numbers, increased interest in a lot of other sports. They like basketball, but you also now have the, the marching saints, and those two add a tremendous atmosphere to a home basketball game. I, like I said, I can only um, say, and what we've said and talked to with our staff, how much fun the games were last year. And football has only made our basketball program better. Uh, Coach James and his staff do an awesome job. And, and just like I said, you know, football guys love basketball. They have so much energy. And, and the band was phenomenal. And they were at our um, Saints Madness a couple weeks ago. And it seemed like they even got better. So um, I, I'm really excited about uh, football and the band and, and our home court advantage. Let me ask you one last question before I, I let you go. And, and we'll close out this interview with uh, two guys with the uh, shortest uh, uh, level of gravity, so the smallest level of gravity that you've ever seen. Um, basketball is still the same game of basketball as when you played? There have been a couple changes. Well, especially in the southeast region, it's just so athletic. Um, you know, people, and basketball has not changed from the standpoint of you got to get the defense off balance to score. And when I was playing, you did that more away from the ball, with away from the ball screening. That's why the flex and motion and all that stuff was so prevalent. And in the southeast region, it's, the game's so athletic, how you get the defense off balance is more with the ball now, um, through penetration and ball screens. And, and so that's probably how it's changed the most, where <clears throat> when I was playing, all the emphasis was away from the ball to get the other team off balance, and that's kind of where you're winning the game or losing the game. And now it's all about the ball. How can you can you guard the ball, and do you have guys who can really break break the defense down off penetration? Coach, I've enjoyed it. Best of luck this season. Don't be a stranger. Want to talk to you again as we progress through the 14-15 campaign. I had a great time. Thanks, baby. Head coach of the Limestone Men's Basketball Program, Brandon Scott. Stay with us. Saints Live continues from the Stevenson Downing Hall on the Limestone campus after these messages on Gaffney's Hot FM. 